All right, students, welcome back, e-learning students. As you know, yesterday we did not have any updates, any lesson, and that was on purpose uh, because of timing with the uh, on-campus class as they have their review day and they have um, the post-test day. So given that we are not gonna have those in our class, I, I kinda give you guys some of that, some of that uh, sometimes maybe be that an activity day. So a lot of you hopefully worked on your article uh, that I assigned the day before. Um, or a day away from a video lesson, kind of a day off, you could say. So uh, today we will have a lengthier lesson going over a very important topic, and that topic is going to be types of fossilization. As for our Go Blue, this is going to be the last Go Blue of our notebook for this unit. Make sure, again, you're keeping your notebooks up to date. We'll be having another notebook check next week. Uh, as for our questions here, number one, what is amber? Two, what is petrification? Again, we should be on page 12. Three, what is the difference between relative age dating and absolute age dating, right? So again, things and updates to think about as well include the lab assignments, the article assignments, and uh, keep keeping up to date with your notebook and uh, the vocab assignment that was also around. So again, every week we're gonna have one or two assignments due. Make sure you're keeping up with those as we go along, okay? So number one, Amber simply put is going to be a hardened tree sap, so fossil trap and hardened tree sap. Think of those yellow samples, uh, those yellow kind of uh, tr uh, transparent stones that have the insects in them, right? And then two, petrification is going to be original material turns into stone. So anything being turned from uh, whatever it was before to stone, that's another way we get fossils. And then three, a little bit more detailed, relative age dating versus absolute age dating. Important here, guys. Relative age is just the order of the rock layers. So always know that the higher the rock layer is, the, um, the higher the rock layer is, the younger the fossil is, right? And the uh, lower the, the um, fossil is, the older it is, right? Absolute age is going to be the exact age of the rock layers. So again, pause this video, make sure you've answered and put those answers on page 12 with your Go Blue questions, okay? Let's go ahead and move on to our uh, lesson of the day, pretty simply put. Oh, and in case you guys, yeah, we've already updated table of contents, so I'm not too concerned there. Uh, but let me go ahead and look up what we have here, fossilization types, right? Okay, uh, so what you guys are going to do, hopefully you can see me in the screen here a little bit, you are going to make, just like you did the origin of life theories, okay, you're going to make five columns, five columns. Again, this is going to be titled fossilization types. Again, five different columns here, or, or rows, or, or sorry if I mixed that up there. So five rows here, right? Okay, five rows. And uh, again, this small box, again, for the five rows on your page 11, page 11, this is going to be just your um, topics, your five topics. Our first topic is going to be, I know it's in the, you can't really see it, but it's mummification. So I have like a bandage and a pyramid. I have amber, Right, and you'll see it when I show the slides, and when, when it's spelt the right, when it's spelt the correct, not reverse way that you see in the video. Uh, tar or tar seeps, and then we had freezing, and then we had uh, petrification. That's like a wood block turns into stone. Okay, so we have five columns, and then in these columns, you're going to have a define an example, define an example, and that's what we're going to be writing, or, or, or simply, but you don't even need define an example. You're just going to write down what's in each slide. Okay. So I have little illustrations there, or topic, topic sections, and then I have the explanation sections. Let's go ahead and go to our first section here, mummification. Again, take a moment to get down the definition and the example here. Simply put, as we all know, mummies from, from Halloween, right? Uh, you get uh, specimens buried, and uh, they're not buried, but they are uh, wrapped in bandage, and they are embalmed with a fluid, okay? Uh, just kind of like a, a grape turns into a raisin. Uh, they're going to be actually uh, taking out the organs uh, and the brain of the specimen so that they can help preserve that uh, specimen body as much as possible and as long as possible. So taking out all the organs and just including the flesh, the skin, and the uh, bones, uh, which is one way you can collect fossils. Uh, as you see, it prevents human decay. Uh, examples of these include humans and cats in Egypt. Again, cats were seen as sacred in ancient Egypt, so many cat fossils uh, in there. We'll see a mummification video here in a second. Our second category, again, on this, on page 11, is amber. We already know this is hardened tree sap, okay? So hard, translucent, brownish, yellow, fossilized resin of ancient trees. Resin is just a technical term for tree sap, so nothing, nothing too complicated there. 
Okay. Uh, and then again, conifers. Conifers are those pine trees, uh, like, like Christmas trees, things like that, with the with kind of the pine smell and the um, the sticky. Uh, again, the sticky stuff, that's part of the, the, the that's part of the resin that comes off that makes amber, right? And again, they use this to protect themselves from insects, uh, let's say termites, uh, ants, building colonies in those tree, in the tree logs that can be very harmful to the trees, to the tree's health and the tree's life. And then as far as examples, uh, fossils we're gonna get from amber include insects, lizards, and small birds. Again, as you've seen the photos here, insects, lizards, and small birds, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at our first uh, little video example. We had, again, it's, a, it's uh, dependent upon you to watch it on your own, but there's no questions with it. I'm just gonna show a little snippet here about uh, how, again, how people made mummies in ancient Egypt. And the raw materials are used to build. Oh, and I'm gonna go ahead, let me just take out this stereo speaker so we can see and hear kind of the audio here. New ones, but what happens when someone dies? Their dead cells are no longer able to renew themselves, but the enzymes keep breaking everything down. So anyone looking to preserve a body needed to get ahead of those enzymes before the tissues began to rot. Neurons die quickly, so brains were a lost cause to ancient Egyptian mummifiers, which is why, according to Greek historian Herodotus, they started the process by hammering a spike into yes. the skull. Yep. Mashing up the brain. So again, very fascinating process. Again, you you are free to watch that on all that on your own. I cannot show all of it because of uh, YouTube, uh, you know, marking off my videos for showing all of people's other videos, right? Uh, so let's go ahead. Again, very interesting scientific process there with preserving those fossils. Uh, and then amber. We'll get back to the amber video in a second. We have our next slide, which is tar seeps. Again, tar. It's like like quicksand. Uh, you have these. Um, natural liquid and gas carbons coming out of the ground under low pressure, a creature can step in that, and then that creature is going to um, get stuck and they can't get out and then they'll, they'll, they'll pass away and their fossil will be in the tar pit. So if these, if these are dug out, you'll often find some uh, uh, bones that you'll see like right there of a mammoth. Uh, and examples include mammoths, saber-toothed cats, and prehistoric horses. Again, works just like quicksand, okay? And then let's go ahead and check out the um, quick amber video. So just a little bit of info on amber that we discussed earlier. Fied or trapped in amber. And in the search for the oldest material, amber seemed like the best place to look. After all, amber traps organisms in a perfect medium for preservation. It dehydrates the DNA, which makes it more stable. And tree resin has antimicrobial properties, which keeps the tissues from breaking down. So in addition to our friend... The so a little few video examples and why amber is so important to fossil collectors as well. Pretty cool stuff there. Uh, and as we go on, let's continue. Uh, so now we should, at this point, be having three categories done. We had our, um, our first one, mummification, we had amber, and we had tar seeps. So we did have a card question. Um, and let me see if I've got one in my other presentation here, if I could show one question at least. Um, so let's go to, if I can see it and, and show that maybe. Uh, hmm. Can't seem to find one here. It looks like it's all the electronic cards for now. Uh, and let me look, see if it's in the presentation. Maybe it came right after this. Ah, dang it. Okay, does not have the card question that I would have liked. Uh, but we'll go ahead, we'll, uh, we'll move on from that just to save ourselves some time today. Um, our fourth, second to last topic is gonna be freezing. Simply put, animals can get caught in a blizzard after getting stuck in tar in a crevice in a pit and when the temperature drops rapidly you'll find that there will be a lot of Ice Age creatures in this category, including woolly mammoths, woolly rhinos, and there actually have uh, creatures called giant penguins uh, that roamed in this time that were um, six feet tall. So imagine a penguin walking around taller than you. Pretty cool fossils I can imagine you'll find from that. But again, freezing, it's, it's as described. It's gonna, it's gonna be stuck and then freeze very, very quickly. We call that flash freezing. Last category of the day, guys, petrification. Simply put, uh, you have hot magma, molten rock, lava flowing over an area. Maybe it flows over a tree. Maybe it flows over uh, seashells on a beach. Those structures are hard enough that they'll withstand total uh, disintegration and they will actually become stone. So wood will become stone and these shells will become stone by filling up the pores with rock. So pretty cool, you see the, uh, the, the log there that's like fully kind of mineralized, pretty cool there. So mostly wooded shells. Uh, organisms are not really petrified because their uh, their uh, tissue and makeup is much softer and uh, 
does not withstand uh, the heat and solidify as well. So uh, again, usually those st structures we get petrification with. Um, so students, that is it for the day. Again, make sure to um, have that down all on page 11. That concludes all of our notes, everything for unit one. And do not forget tomorrow we are gonna have our next unit quiz. It's gonna be 15 to 17 questions. Again, it's probably gonna be due Monday or Tuesday, but you work on it over the weekend. Again, do your very best. Have your notebook up to date uh, so that you score your very highest on that unit quiz. Uh, again, Mr. Campbell, I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Message me if you have any questions. Do not forget, we've got the unit one vocab due tomorrow as well as the lab assignment due tomorrow. So make sure those are submitted online through attachments, uh, preferably in JPEG format because it makes it really easy for me to read it and scroll through your assignments. And uh, yeah, Mr. Campbell, uh, again, hope everyone's doing well. And uh, Mr. Campbell, signing out.